Hi, I'm Barry Godin and welcome back to BG Tips, part two of packing your bags. So last episode we packed the frame bag and we packed the front bag. So today we're going to crack on and start packing the seat pack. So this is the one I use. Um, you've got to be a little bit smart when it comes to packing a seat pack. You've got a thin end here where the saddle goes. Um, so you want to make sure you wedge that in and pack it in tight and also put your heavy items there. If you put your heavy items on the end, it's going to be flopping around. So put the heavy items there. There is also why you want to pack it really, really tight in the bottom because it then has to support the rest of the bag and that'll help it be a lot more, um, yeah, a stiff structure. Uh, so the first thing is probably the most important thing that goes in my um, seat pack and that is a hip flask of whiskey. This will come in when we talk about wild camping. Having something to just uh, relax yourself and calm yourself down will stop you being all alert for all those noises everywhere and um, yeah, put you a bit more peace of mind and a funny thing ahead, especially if you're a mate. So yes, hip flask of whiskey goes in first. That, I'm not going to talk about too much, but goes at the bottom of the seat pack. If you put something metal at the top of it, it's going to go bang, bang, bang on the saddle rails or the seat post. So make sure you put it underneath uh, and that means your whiskey hip flask won't go banging all the way along the trail. And then weight wise, I find it's often my coffee and my porridge and my cup of soup that I'll slide in next. There's also really nice malleable packets. We said before we're going away for six days on this trip, potential trip. So that is five breakfasts. I have five cup of soups in there. And I also have five of my new coffee bags, which is uh, pretty grand. Can't wait to use them out and about. Someone gave me a great top tip though in the last video. These ones, you can make your own coffee bags. You put your own coffee in there, fold it over, staple it up and um, take them with you. So after the run out of these ones, I'm going to be making my own with my own uh, brew inside. So that should be quite fun and quite nice. Um, I'll put a link down below. Hopefully these are really quite smart. I think they're 13p each. Um, yeah, quite, quite good. So let's get these in there. Uh, again, pack right down to the end. Make sure you fill up the bottom. Then I've got my cup of soups. Then I've got my coffees. And uh, let's try and always squeeze the air out of everything. Air is wasted space. Let's get out of there. Uh, also, genuine at the bottom, we're going to skip it ahead a little bit. I wedge a toilet roll in the bottom and then I'll put some toilet roll near the top. <laughs> That's easy access. But we said before, keep it double sandwich bags. That keeps it extra dry. Make sure you don't get it wet. You don't want wet toilet roll. Just get that in the bottom. The other quite heavy category I've got to get in this seat pack is in my hygiene. So that's bottles of liquid. So that game wants to go as far back as possible. Depending on how long I'm going for, depends on how much hygiene stuff I'll take. But you've got to take a towel. That goes in its own dry bag, first of all. You've got your toothpaste. You've got your toothbrush. Uh, shower gel. I'm not taking a lot on this one because I probably won't find a shower. Uh, probably might put a couple of wet wipes in there, which I haven't got with me. Uh, and then we're next up is kind of first aid and first aid is all the bits we came out the other day with a couple of bits that have been added since the last time we were talking about hygiene is some Savalon. I've got some Savalon in there now. So some antiseptic stuff. I then have some tweezers, which is great for pulling some stuff out. And the biggest one I don't want to be using is this one. This is a tick uh, tweezer. So it means you can get the tick out without breaking its body off of its head. So that's definitely gonna stay in there all the time, wherever I am. Um, the one I might not be packing this time is the insect repellent. I'm not going to Scotland in this trip, but if I was, that's 100% going in, but probably not in the bottom of the bag. That might go in one of those front bags so it's easily accessible. You never know when you might need it. First aid goes in, chamois cream. Uh, I can generally get a good week out of a pot, so I probably don't need two pots on this trip. Uh, that goes in next. The one that I didn't pack in the first aid bit was the tent tape. Essential. We've covered that before. And my other first aid is some really big um, sterile dressings. So uh, this is pretty wild trip. Around town you won't need this much stuff, but if you're going really, really wild, that makes me self-supported for all those kind of eventualities that might happen. The other bit that might go a little bit higher up in the bike, but for the moment to pop in here, this is antibacterial cream. You want to put it up with your toilet roll only. Um, so you always got it with you. And uh, yeah, 
The one bit I won't be using is my sun cream, but I will put it in there just so we can weigh it and see how we're looking um, and go from there. So again, roll this up, squeeze the air out, get all that out. So that goes in the bottom. Get that really wedged in. So you can see I've actually only packed to there. So I only packed this tail bit here. So we've got all my coffees and porridges, that's heavy. I've got then my uh, hygiene bag, that's heavy again. Uh, so up next will probably be evening clothing. Before I forget where you can get those fill your own coffee bags, you can also get this amazing water bottle, which means you can take a whole bottle of wine with you and it won't break on your journey. Uh, in Iceland, we did take a whole bottle of whiskey with us in one of these, not this one with a wine bottle in the front, but that was particularly useful and it's definitely worth trying to find a space for it, but I oh, thought well, it was pretty cool. I quite like that. So evening clothing. It can be stripped down a little bit because it's not winter. It's meant to be summer, so it's meant to be warm in those evenings. Uh, I will be taking a proper down jacket, so if I do get chilly, I will be protected. So I'll probably lose this really thick um, base layer and probably just take a thin t-shirt. Uh, and then I might still take the leggings though because in an evening they're quite nice to get out, get in these rather than trying to wear your wet horrible shorts you've been wearing all day. Um, might minus the woolly hat, might actually even uh, reduce the size and go through one without a bobble. Shocking stuff. Uh, but I might leave the hat at home. The socks I will be taking because, oh, again, luxury times as we said. I'm taking my underwear. Do take your underwear to make sure you can get out of something horrible and wet. Um, so yeah, that's kind of evening clothing. What have we got in this bag? I just grabbed some stuff out from the cupboard. Uh, another woolly hat, some more luxury socks. Um, gloves, if it was winter, it's not winter, I'm not taking them. And that's my other trekking towel and the buff will come in later on. So let's pack that stuff because evening clothing is actually quite small uh, for once in my life. Uh, that would go in, they're my leggings, and I've got pants to change into. I've got socks, I've seen a t-shirt for the top, which I need to grab one, and um, that will go in, and uh, that's everything I need to keep, stay comfy. That's my down jacket, so that's already packed up, ready to go in the bag. Um, and yeah, let's pop that t-shirt in there, then that's my evening clothes finished off. Let's compress that one out, roll down, squeeze, pull, squeeze, Get all the air out and then roll it up. You see, it does look quite vacuum packed. It's pretty cool when you do that. Uh, make sure you do, don't hold air in there. And let's get the seat pack and let's slide that in. So, oh, flip them around. So we've got even clothes in there. Give it a good wedge. Probably gonna slide in. On my list, you see spare kind of riding clothes or spare accessories. Take a buff, take one or two buffs any time of year. You never know when you might need them, even for sun reasons. And take some warm gloves. These are warm riding gloves, just in case it's raining all day and it does get wet and cold or get windy. They can kind of stay in there nice and sweet. So inside, I'm kind of sliding things past each other. These dry bags are nice and slippery, which means you can get them wedged in between each other. Then next is gonna be my down jacket that goes in. Let's do a quick check on the list. So let's see what we can now got packed in the bike. So on the evening clothes section, we've got underwear, t-shirt, waterproof trousers we don't need on this one, merino trousers we do have, merino top, no. Well, that's right, yes, merino top's in. Nice comfy socks. We've got shoes are in the other bag, which you saw in the front bag video. Head net, I won't need that this time. Woolly hat, I won't need, hopefully. Um, spare clothes I've got. I've got spare socks you saw that go in the other bag. We've got gloves, we've got lycra in the other bag. Buff, we've got, because um, that's my riding clothes there on the other bag. Bike clothes at the top of the list. Um, I will talk about that later because that's what's going to go on my body. So I won't need to pack that in the bike. Uh, what are we missing out? Uh, we are missing out in the food section. Foldable backpack. So that chap, um, I put quite close to the entrance of the rear bag, which means if I get some, I can easily grab it out and use it. There's no point in having it stuffed in the bottom of a bag and not being able to get to it. Water tablets, we almost forgot. So these are my hydration tablets. I'll then put them next to my bladder in my frame bag. I also forgot to put lube in my frame bag, which is also on the tools list, and my lock, which also will go in the frame bag. And they'll get it slided in. You saw there's a couple of extra, very small gaps that I can get them into. Um, so I'll wedge them in. Let's tick those off. So we've got a lock we've got in there, and then we've got the water tablets in there. So the only thing we're missing is 
bars, which go in an accessory pouch, lunch will go in an accessory pouch. We've got navigation electronics, which will go all over the bike. Hygiene's all packed. And then we've got, the only thing left is what we're riding in. The rear bag is almost packed. Just a couple of things I'd like to put at the kind of the nose or the mouth of the bag is gonna be my waterproofs. Uh, so I've got my rain jacket and I've got my windstopper jacket. That means I can switch between them very, very easily, nice and easy to get to. Ah, and before we do forget, at the top of the bag also goes the other pack of loo roll, which needs topping up, and my new poo shovel. So they're gonna go easy access. Not gonna mean a panic, but you don't wanna be um, scurrying around all your bags if you do need to. And then that's pretty much the rear bag packed. So let's roll him up, keep it a good squeeze, pull it all in, get it nice and close. And you'll notice when it's on the bike, we can ratchet it even closer in. Um, I'll show you what I mean. So quickly just clip these in here. These have got really cool little lock on them. Uh, a lot of the bags do, uh, so it means when you do go really uh, pulling them in, they don't kind of lose tension throughout the day, because do be aware, once you've done everything up, you probably halfway through the day have to just double check everything, check it hasn't come loose, especially if you go down some ridiculous uh, descent, and all your luggage ends up uh, halfway down the trail. So pull it in, and you notice how much that pulls in, and how much smaller it becomes. <clears throat> That's pretty impressive stuff. So, and then it has this little one here that goes around and just grabs on there, which is another way of kind of making it a bit more supportive and a bit tighter. So a bit of a wiggle in here. Come on. Cool, cinch that in. So, the way I've packed it, you see how it's got all the heavy stuff in the bottom. We have the down jacket and the light coats at the top, the easy access stuff. You also notice how vertically it sits. So that's your seat post there, and that's how vertically it should sit on the bike. Yes, it will flex a little bit, but if it's left like that, it's gonna really, really be kind of saggy and a bit floppy. So this way, it, you can have a vertical seat post there. That's gonna clip onto the saddle rail, so it should mount quite nicely. And I guess, as I said, when this is on and you pull it into the bike, you can really give it some more tension, but I'll show you when I actually mount that to the bike. Let's just see what we come in on the scales. We're coming in at 3.1 kilograms. That's not bad. That means we're nicely balanced between the front four and a half, the frame bags four and a half, and the rear we're looking at three. So we're nicely spreading the weight out, the heavy stuff's as low as we can get it. And uh, yeah, that's quite smart. Let's move on. So this is the fork bag. This is a five litre dry bag, which I strap onto that cargo cage you saw in the last video. And this I'll use to expand my food if I need to carry food for someone else or I'm going for a longer trip myself. So let's see how much we can squeeze in there. So we've got two uh, mils there. We've got another two there. And let's squeeze in another one. So that brings us to five. And what I'll generally do is I'll make a little hole down the middle. And in that hole down the middle, so I've got food pouches either side and then down the middle, I can be putting some extra food. So we need more breakfast, so let's pop that in the bottom. And then we squeeze in a couple more cup of soups. And then at the top, we're gonna to place a few more bars in case we want to top up my little fuel tank, as I'll show you later on, as we go along. So hopefully I've packed it. I'll get the kind of strap near the top, which means I can really cinch it in nice and tightly. Uh, I'll also carry another can of gas on one of the sides if I'm going for a longer, longer trip and I need more fuel. So I'll probably space some of that food out between the two. But you can see very easily, that's another five dinners, five breakfasts and five cup of soups. Uh, so you can see how small it can be in your bag um, and you can kind of be a bit more self-sufficient and camp in nicer places. Give you an idea, that weighs in, that comes in at 1.7 kilograms. So both sides, that then be free. Um, you can see how the weight's now spread around. That's really low on the bike, which means it does control quite well and kind of similar up to the frame bag in terms of the weight. Um, so that's where that would end up going. Um, you have to get used to really kind of lifting up the front end. But the best thing about these front bags is they're full of food. So as you eat them, your front end will get a little bit lighter, which means you can have a little bit more fun and you feel a bit fitter at the end of the trip. So up front on the stem, I'll run these two stem cells, which that was one I was previously using. And these are the ones I'm gonna start packing today. They're a lot, lot bigger. So hopefully it'll help me with wedging some things in. First of all, that's my cook set. 
please check one other videos if you haven't seen it. That's everything I need. That's two cups, two spoons, forks, uh, the cup, the gas. That gas will probably get me three days, so I probably need to sneak another small one in the rest of the bike, which is probably easy to get in the rear bag if there's enough space. So let's see what that weighs on its own. That comes just under 600 grams, so that's not too bad at all. What we do need to try and squeeze in the bike somewhere, and probably the most painful thing to fit somewhere are the inner tubes. Uh, we spoke about them before, uh, but they are a bit of a pain. But I'm thinking I have a new spot. They'll either go in my uh, fork bags if I had them. If not, I'm hoping with this extra space on the bottom of this uh, stem cell, I'm going to get them snuck in there. That's one in there, and let's get the other one in there as well. Entertain yourselves. I don't think people know how long I do this video for. It takes forever. Number two, let's squeeze him in. And let's see if my cook set will fit on top of that, which I'm thinking it will. So that goes in there. Then I've got my cook set, slidey, slidey. You could probably pack it a little bit better, but that's my two tubes in the bottom. That's my full cooking set, everything I need. Probably could even squeeze another gas in there if I was really going for it. Uh, and that means the other side would then be left for electronics and navigation. Before we move any further, let's just go back to the list. Let's take off what we've got packed because I have to mentally think about this too. Uh, so we've got full cooking set in there, the stove, cooking pans, we've got the mug, we've got the fuel in there as well. We've got the cutlery, um, we purify water, that one in the frame bag, and I've got my lighter in there. Uh, lunch, we're going with another bags, and what we've got left, not a lot. Um, just the big subject of navigation electronics. But before we move on to that, I'm gonna quickly show you a couple of my top tube bags. So of the two top tube bags, I'll use one for my electronics, my phone, my microphone, I'll show you in a minute. The rear bag, which sits just underneath my saddle, um, will actually have all my bars that I'm gonna be nibbling or nuts or stuff I wanna have throughout the day. I've only got a few bits, I'm not topped up, and I also squeeze the chorizo sausage in here as well, and maybe my cheese would go in there, and then that'll be kind of my nibblage bag for the day. When you stack your stuff in, try and stack it vertically. You're gonna get so much more in than laying it flat and just kind of stacking them up. So always squeeze every bit of space you can out of these bags. 16, 17. So that's 17 bars I've managed to get in there. And that's without even really compressing it too tightly. I'm getting a little bit more in there. Um, so that's what sits on the back. That is a bit of weight, but if you notice, we've got a lot of weight at the front of the bike, which is quite good to get a bit more weight at the back. Again, quite low on the frame. It does kind of rattle around a bit on my bike, so you have to kind of get it in nice and tight. And my knees go over the top tube, so I just kind of set it in the right position, but it's generally pretty good. And this double zip axis is quite smart and quite nice to get nuts and stuff in there. That's my nibbleage bag. So if you weight weenies out there, my nibbleage bag comes in at 900 grams. That's quite a lot, but you know what? That's a lot of food and that'd be enough for a week away um, to graze on, so yeah. That, and also try and get lunches when you're out and about, but if you're in the wild, you need to carry some food, that's a good place to put it. So this front top tube bag sits just in front of me on the bike, and it's one I put everything I need to get hold of really, really quickly. So in will go my phone, then my phone mounts, which then take, will get my tripod out of my uh, frame bag. I do then carry a small tripod, that will go in there. I've got a knife, um, that's for my sausage. <laughs> you don't forget to take a knife if you're taking a treat of sausage. Then my microphone will go in, either with this protective case, that's my MV88 Shaw mic, which I use on my phone for my recording. That slot in there as well. And then I put my wallet, my phone, my keys in there. Um, well, my phone's in there and other stuff. So that will go in that front pouch and that's the stuff I need to get to, headphones, you name it. It's quite a good size, so I don't want it too tight because I'm going to literally as I'm riding along, grab my phone out, film, shove it back in without even stopping. And um, I do that a lot. I do so much filming on the bike. Get out, film something that was rattling along, shove it back in, keep going. Um, so it's quite smart. It keeps things flowing a lot faster when you're on the bike. So that's my front accessory top tube bag. A quick check of the list, which is always good when you get into the end of packing. You want to make sure you've got everything before you go, oh no, I forgot that massive object. This is my down jacket. I have to forget my down jacket. I need to add it to my list, actually, which is a lot of space in the bikes. So you need to try and wedge stuff out and take him in and out. So let's quickly have a look. Uh, what we got? We got locks in there. Lunch is almost in there. Bars are in there. Um, hygiene's all done. We've got so from the very top. 
We've got bike clothes are going on me. We've got the stuff that goes in the bike. We've got the waterproof coat, that stuff is in there. Spare clothes is fully in the bike. We've got evening clothes, that's fully in the bike. Um, tools and spares, I did forget my multi-tool. So my multi-tool is gonna be one of those items that go in that front accessory bag where my phone and my other stuff is. So it's easy to get hold of. I need it in a rush, it's gonna be there. Make sure it doesn't rattle around, but yeah, do pack it in that bit there. Uh, so that's tools and spares done. Sleeping, we've still got the head torch to go, but that'll go in navigation and electronics. Eating and cooking's done, food's all done, hygiene's all done. So we've got the last category, which I need to run around and grab all the battery bricks and stuff I'll take on a trip. And I'll see you in one moment. So next up, we have the electronics. So first of all, is a few items gonna sit on the bike. My Garmin is gonna sit on the front of the bike, so that doesn't need to be packed. I need to make sure I've got the charger for it. So first of all, Garmin on the front of the bike. My GoPro will also sit on the front of the bike all the time. So I need to make sure I've got the batteries and the charger for it. So before we go any further, that is my uh, cable. That does my Garmin. It also charges my battery bricks up as well. So get that in there. I then have my GoPro cable, which I need. And then I also have my phone cable, which is here. And then following on the old school compass, that gets slotted in here just in case it gets stuck somewhere. And then I'm gonna pack a rear light, that goes in the bottom of the bag. The head torch we talked about is important, really, really needs to go on the top somewhere because you never know when you might need it really quickly. And then my battery prick fetish. Uh, so yes, I'm gonna, this, for this example, I'm gonna pack two large ones and one medium sized one. These are 20, 20 and 10. I'm not taking a drone, but that would be more than enough power, more than enough power to be wild for a week, I'd say, for my phone every day and car charging up my Garmin, which hopefully is done by the Dynamo um, and GoPro batteries will come to, will then be separate. So that should do my phone and various other things for a week, week and a half, I reckon. So they're gonna slot in there. GoPro batteries have their own little pouch. The reason is because when it's used, I lob it in the bag. So I know the ones in the bag are fully charged. So I'm gonna faff around trying to work out which ones are. So as soon as I've used one, it gets lobbed in there. And in the evenings I do get charged or I need to, I'll then charge them up from the bag and then put them back in that. So it's good to have a bit of a system. Also in that, which I haven't got right this second, I was gonna be my spare SD cards, which will go in the little holder and they'll be thrown in there with that. Here's a little new item I'm gonna try and squeeze in here today. It's a Bluetooth receiver for your phone, which means you can do remote photographs. So when you're in your tent, you can do that stunning shot of you looking at the view and you can trigger remote it. So that's quite cool actually, and it's quite small. So that should pop in there. Headphones, uh, I'm gonna need to pack. Don't forget your dongle. Um, if you're an iPhone user, carry some wide headphones. Don't forget a spare one of these because these snap all the time. So do put that somewhere safe. And then the front light's gonna be on the bike as well. I'll only take this size light if it's winter and I knew I was gonna ride in the dark. If not, I'll take a much smaller one, lob it in this bag so it's not on the front of the bike. I don't need it all the time. But if it's winter, always front light on there all the time, ready to go. So let's roll that up. Let's try and get this in my new stem cell, which I'm hoping will be a lot easier to fit. And if I wanted to carry a chest mount for my GoPro, which I think creates a really cool shot, especially if you're doing off-road descending, um, that's a really good place to kind of hopefully store it in the bottom, I'm hoping. Uh, normally I put it in one of the fork bags. It's quite good there, so I can just open it up, grab it out before I descent. Um, I'm gonna see if it fits in the bottom of that new stem cell. In he goes in the bottom, followed by electronics bag, which is not very sensible to have it folded up to get it in. Let's let all the air get out. So that's all in with my uh, GoPro mount at the bottom. That's quite good. It means I've got an extra storage space to kind of shove something in. Uh, and that does fit in there quite nicely. Uh, I'm a bit scared of the weight of this one for you weight winnies. It's coming in at... Dun, dun, dun. 1.5 kilograms. That's not bad considering how much power is in there and other accessories. So that is my electronics and navigation. The other stuff will go on the bike. That will go at the front. And we're pretty much packed. So there we are. Everything I'm gonna be taking on a trip for a week or two weeks because I've got the food pouch here as well. So I hope you've seen the way I pack. I hope it made some sense. I do overpack this where I could lose a lot of weight and a lot of things, but becoming a weight weenie is not my uh, name of the game. Unless I'm gonna do a race, which hopefully one day I might do. 
Um, and then, yes, I won't take battery bricks. I won't take all this extra camera stuff, tripods, and that may be a lot lighter. Um, but hopefully you see, that's where my basic kit is. You can see how it's very simple. That is it for even one night, 90% of this stuff comes with me. And if I'm going for multiple nights, it's just add more food. We either add on a front bag on the forks or expand other bits. You can see how very easy you can get three days, four days with just the minimal kit. Let's quickly just check off the kit list. I always do it. I've got all the stuff on the bike and then I sit there before I leave. I'm like, you always get a bit nervous. Have I got everything? Just sit there, tick off the list again. You can see you've crossed it off. Go, yes, I've actually got that. Yes, I've got that. Yes, I've got that. And it makes you a peace of mind before you head off. And when you're out the door, you know what? There's nothing you can do about it. You have what you have, so just go and enjoy yourself. But I hope you found that useful. Uh, next video, we're going to be putting these bags on my bike, and then we're going to hopefully be heading out on an adventure. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you're having some great adventures at the moment. And until next time, ciao for now. <laughs>